Hello friends, welcome to my video. In this video, I will show you how to design a simple game in MATLAB using App Designer. I'll use I'll I'll not use command line uh, tool for this, but I'll use the graphical tool provided by Mat uh, Matfox for this. So I will go and create a new App Designer. Uh, yeah, so this game will be where I will display few images and images will appear randomly and the user the player has to click on these images and when he clicks on those images then he gets more scores and it will be a time limited game so for that we need uh, for inserting our click operation we need few buttons so buttons can be like this so this will change into image so let's make it like a shape of image so these buttons are although it gives text but we can also provide icons uh, some kind of image over here so we go to this more properties here and we can browse the icon file one thing you should note that i have already brought some image file over here which is a penguin image which is a standard in one of matlab this windows installation but you can choose your funny image over here so i will use this image file to get this i go back to my app designer and i just click here probably I will, you have to select a file okay if i click on uh, um, i get this i just select my penguin image and this comes here so this is my button one so i uh, i will create few buttons like this you are free to choose your layout you can put it randomly anywhere probably i will go for a grid structure over here so I'll make around nine buttons similarly. So I'll do Control C, Control V, and one second Control V. So probably I'll make this over here and align it somewhere here. Yes. And now what I will do is I will have three more layers of this. Control V. So I can probably put it like this. Uh, yes. So this is my button 4, 5 and 6. You can see on the right hand side these button numbers. And as the next step we will go and create Ctrl C, Ctrl V. So I will create for 9 images or so 9 buttons. Yeah. Here, okay. Okay. So we have got it. Now I save this. So I will save it by the name of save for example my MATLAB underscore okay. game. So this got saved. If you want to quickly check, we can just do a one run and see if all these images are coming. Fine. Of course, nothing will happen right now. We close it. Now we need few more. Uh, one one is we need some kind of scorecard, a scoreboard. So we can put a kind of text box or, or probably label because we don't want to edit it. It's, it will be a fixed uh, image. So we can increase its size something like this and. Initial probably to be a zero, so we'll keep it zero. I will like to increase its size to 36. I want it to be bold, and that's all. And something for timer as well, because it will be a fixed time. Probably I'll give 60 seconds for the player to complete the game. So I'll put the timer over here, and I'll put 60. Again, I'll put this. Probably I'll increase the size of this a little bit, and. Increase the size to 20. Yeah, looks good. Now there should be some a start button to start this. So I can bring this start button here. And yes, and I change to start. And probably I make it a little bigger. So I think now most of my widgets are placed. We can start coding. I will just do a quick run and see if everything is appearing fine or not. Yes. So now we switch to the code view and in code view we start doing the coding. So for this start button, uh, let's give a callback to this because this will be the button responsible for a little bit. Uh, yes, this button will be responsible for starting my game. So I give a callback here. Right now since there is no callback present, so I will just start a uh, start button push button and here I will write my code. So here we can use something called timer provided by Matchbox. So that we can so we can create something called as timer here. So we we'll use the timer functionality 
and some of the other properties of timer is like you have to defend your period and the execution mode and the delay so what are the things we can provide is we can put a probably help and see what are the things we need so <coughs> we will need period execution mode so execution mode will be probably our uh, fixed rate and we have to find a period and what else we can do is we can define a start function and probably that's it or, or better than that we can uh, define this task to execute so we define uh, period probably at each one second execution mode will be fixed rate I'm not sure uh, if this is the way we have to mention it and then probably we have to mention is tv dot let me go back and see tasks to execute so how many tasks we have to execute so that will probably 60 seconds we need to do but it's a period with one second so i'll go for 59 times and then we need the callback function or the task timer function so each time this function will be called so that we can do is like we don't need an input argument we know this event nothing to do with ok and we can have some kind of toggle button because what, we'll <coughs> what we will be doing is we will be toggling this button so that's why I am giving a name but you are free to choose whatever name you, you can and you, please note we will have to write this function separately and the parameter we can pass is this app the uh, the handle to this app so that this gets all the details of my function and then we can do is if you go here we can do a start timer so we can do such kind of so instead of this we have to use probably start and then we have to start our timer yes and use this fixed rate I think it should be smaller and that's all that's all now we write our toggle button function so we go to our MATLAB environment and create a <coughs> new MATLAB function we just give this a name of toggle button we don't need any output argument so we just remove it in terms of input argument we are just passing one of them that is app we just clean up the default things whatever comes up so this is my button so I saved this and it came here as a separate uh, MATLAB function file okay so now we write our function here so what are the things we have to do is we have to uh, if I go back to my this we have to toggle the appearance of these buttons one by one so that we can use probably creating some kind of random number generator and using it in switch case so probably what I will do is I will just go to switch and call and uh, I, I, why I am choosing 3 is because at any point of time I will just toggle between these first two, uh, 3 buttons and for all the 3 rows I will do it separately so first we are doing it for the first row so if k is equal to 1 so what we can do is we can probably make the button first button app visible and rest two buttons invisible so first button is app dot button so I will make app dot button dot visible equal to on and I will make the other buttons as off I think I missed one bracket here that's fine I just control C control A. so this becomes my button 2 this becomes my button 3 and this becomes my off this also becomes my off so only first button will be available if my lambda number gives 1 I will do the similarly for 2 and 3 control G ok so I will do it for 2 we will do the indentation later that's not a problem 
I do an L and if you want to really indent we can just select all and right click and do a, a smart in, indent and yeah we have to change this also so we make it off first one we make this second one on third one plotting off yes and in this one we make first one off we need second one also off and third one on yes so this we did for the first row we can do the similarly for second and third row so let's do that quickly so I do control I just copy paste the same switch case uh, three times so this so first time we are done so for the second time we will do is we need the buttons four five six now this time five and six four five six four five six and I think this on off on off we can leave as it is because if random number is one then button four will be visible and rest two will be invisible similarly we can do for the third one is seven eight nine so seven eight nine this is the third switch condition switch is seven eight nine seven eight nine yes so here we got all our switch cases statement to appear correctly now some other things which we have to do is we have to make sure this timer also decreases so so that user can or player can <coughs> visualize how much time he's left with so this particular uh, button if i select it's a app dot label 2 so we have to make sure that text value of this good gets decreased. So if we go back to our code, <coughs> that probably we can do on the top itself. So app label <coughs> underscore two, and then we can probably fetch the text field of this. So we go fetch the extra text equals to, and uh, we have to decrease that value. So we'll get a number. So we first we'll do is num to string because and then we'll inside this we'll do a computation so what we have to do is we have to first fetch whatever the text here it is change it into the numerical format and subtract it by one so we first do a string to num and then we do it is we get this value app dot uh, label underscore two dot text so this and then we do minus one here and I think that's it this should be fine this is orange thing if I uh, hover over it it says if you are putting on a scalar values consider using a string to double for faster okay we change it to from num to double I don't care we see okay so once we have done it now if we quickly run it we can see we should be able to see that this particular uh, Time should be decreasing. Okay, we have to click on this start button and see. Yeah, this time has started decreasing, and all these all these buttons are appearing, disappearing randomly. But what I want to do is, if when I press in, of, on any one particular button, this score should increase because we have not given any callback to this button as of now, so nothing is happening. So let's go and put a callback now. So I go back to my main uh, this. In the meantime, also we will observe is it should stop after uh, 60 seconds. We started with 60, so it should stop when it reaches zero. So that also will validate very glad. Now in this we put a callback to one by one of to our button. So I go to one of the buttons, I select this, and so <coughs> we have only one of this uh, function. Of course, we don't want to use. So we'll create a new um, function over here. And over here, what we are seeing is that uh, we can. So we have to do the same thing what we did with this. Instead of just decreasing, we have to increase it by a particular value. So what we can do is we can just copy paste the same text over here, same part, and paste it over here. But instead of label two, we have to do it for label uh, one, which is a simple app app dot label, and we will remove this. And we set the text equal to string, but instead of minus one, we should do some plus here. So plus one, plus ten, or probably I like to choose plus fifteen. And um, yeah, 
that's it i think and but yeah so right now i give the callback to only first button i will give, give the same callback to all the buttons so you can just quickly <coughs> Uh, select uh, by clicking on this drop down menu and select this uh, button push so button 4 will be also same because I want to do the same addition to that uh, scroll card button 6 so I think once we set all the callbacks our uh, game is ready to play we can start playing some of the features which I am not showing in this video is how to uh, record and store the last highest score that you that you can uh, do it like an exercise that how you can uh, record the last uh, highest score what you get uh, so that people can uh, do complete with each other that uh, who has scored uh, what maximum value after the lapse time of 60 seconds so if I play this again so it starts opening now if I click on any of these buttons so see so I am getting some scores Okay, so I was uh, I can just click on these buttons. I am lucky that so this is uh, so I, I, if I am lucky I will get some button which which moves which doesn't move too much and I can get uh, points over here so I can just keep clicking and getting points as much as possible. This timers you can set of course this uh, addition of this score card also you can set that by how much point you want it to increase by fifty or hundred or. Uh, the scaling you can choose you can even give, in, give different values to different buttons like for say, example for this button you increase by 100 for this button you increase by 50 for this one by 30 you can spread this button all over the layout you can have some start and stop and pause button also which pauses or stops all these callbacks in between so you can really play around with this so these things I will leave it as it is ok so here what we are seeing is this stops at 1 so I think uh, I would have liked to go it till 0 so for that probably we will have to set it to from 59 to 60 and that will take it to until 0 so I start it again and in the meantime when it plays till 0 I can just tell you so few things you can try it on your own one is to record this statement uh, record this the last highest score and second thing is how to stop the callbacks once this timer is over. So these two I will leave it as an exercise. If you have questions please let me know. Please put it in the comment section and I will come up with a solution. I will let you know about the solution for that as well. That's very easy. But for this video I will leave it uh, for the timing here itself. So it's only 20 more seconds to go. I will wait for a few times. Probably I will pause this video for 10 yes so here I am back so I pause the video for 10 seconds 2 1 0 yes so you saw right it stops at 0 so it works perfectly fine I can restart and again it will start from minus 1 so that's that's a long thing we should take care of that in our uh, uh, programming so that you can take it as an exercise and stop and start restart button option ok so thank you for watching my video if you have any questions please do put in the comment section if you like this video Please subscribe to my channel. You can watch. Uh, you can get lots of information on MATLAB and uh, Simulink information. Also, I do programming in Android, so you can find videos on Android as well on my channel. Please do subscribe my channel and do like my videos if you are interested to get more information. Thank you again for watching it and bye.